haven't done this in a while, but let's let's just start uh, a little different. Let's talk about the history of West Pelzer. We 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 haven't talked about this in a long. Tell people how West West Pelzer came to be. Yeah, let's start at the beginning. Um, so around 1900, uh, Pelzer Manufacturing was operated uh, along the Saluda River. They had built some of the first dams, generated electricity, uh, and Captain Smythe and Francis Pelzer were running one of the largest mill organizations in the southeast. Uh, Captain Smythe did not allow three things, and those three things were gambling, dogs, and alcohol. Uh, those were three things that kept you away from work. Uh, that uh, if your dog was sick you'd stay at home or you had a gambling problem or you had too much to drink then you couldn't make money for for the meal. Uh, so a guy by the name of John Franks in 1913, uh, he was a surveyor, um, he got fed up with it and he said look I still want to work for you guys but I don't want to live in one of your mill homes, I don't want to shop at the mill store, I want to be paid in US currency. Um, and he walked across what was the railroad tracks at Monkey Park or Highway 20 um, and he started uh, Christmas Eve 1913 as the snow fell the Secretary of State signed into existence Frankville. Um, and so the aldermen got together, um, formed Frankville, uh, formed our first ordinances, uh, our first policies. And September the 13th, 1918, uh, the aldermen got together with the constituent base um, and they changed the name to the town of West Pelzer. Um, and so for probably uh, 75 years after that, Frankville and West Pelzer uh, and Pelzer, they butted heads on a lot of things. Uh, and it's all, all started because of that, uh, that early beginning of what Pelzer or Pelzer manufacturing um, didn't allow. Uh, so we were formed again in 1913 and the town of Pelzer didn't come along and, be, and, and become incorporated until 1955. Uh, so we are the elder city of the two. And what, what are some of the oldest buildings still on West Pelzer here? Yeah, so some of the oldest buildings are still um, the building that we're in. Uh, was built in, in the 50s. Uh, we do have some old older home sites in town. And so the oldest home in town um, is a, a, a white piece of property around the, the, the 60 Main Street area. Uh, it's actually the first home built, 1898. Uh, so there's a log cabin inside of this two-story um, home. So the log cabin was built in 1898. Um, 1913, uh, the home was built around it. Um, right at about 60 Main Street on the other side of the street uh, was a home built for the Welburn family and in 1931 um, it was the mortuary before Gray Mortuary was constructed. Um, and so if you, if you stand in front of that home and look you can still see the window to the right is a floor to ceiling um, window. That's where they rolled the gurneys through. The kitchen was the embalming room um, and it's actually in Ghost of the Upstate. And then one of the other older homes up near um, the Mexican restaurant or the traffic signal at Stewart Street and Main Street, there's a large brick home that was built in the early 1900s. Um, and that's where Mr. Timmerman uh, lived at. Mr. Timmerman was the first individual or was the founder of the Department of Natural Resources for the state of South Carolina. Hence why we have Timmerman Boat Landing and, and the town of Pelzer. And let's fast forward to today. Um, what are some of the newest buildings coming down through here? Yep. So, or at least they've been refurbished upon the newest. Yeah. So um, 2015, I always love to tell this story. 2015, we had 100% uh, vacancy in our, in our downtown. We did not have any restaurants. We did not have any shops. It was all used for storage. Um, so we put together a strategic master plan, hired some outside consultants to help us visualize what these buildings could be. And so our city hall uh, was formerly a part store. Um, the adjacent building was Dolly Cooper's Furniture Store way back in the day. We had um, an old drug store that's now a Japanese restaurant. Um, so all of our buildings on Main Street have been completely um, redone over time. Um, even some of the newest kind of strip mall buildings across from uh, City Hall, um, which is where uh, Cotton Duck Coffee Shop is opening up July the 1st, which is where we have A1, which is a gentleman's barber shop, so a shave and a haircut. Um, we have a startup church in one of those. Uh, they have yoga classes in the back. Um, so even some of our newest buildings are being completely uh, reworked. Blessed to say that since 2015 until currently, we've had about 60 new homes added in, in West Pelzer, uh, which is a big deal when you were only 400 homes to start with. Uh, so we're on a projection for about 20 plus percent growth over the next five years just off of new permits that have been pulled or new um, lots that have been platted out. We're still crossing our fingers for the next commercial development to happen. Uh, we realized that we went from 100% vacancy to 100% occupancy. And so we have folks call us all the time wanting you know, to bring in a new restaurant or a new retail shop. And we frankly just don't have anywhere to put you at right now. 
And you made sure the sidewalks were good and that you had a walking town. We do, we do. So, um, you know, as part of the first development in, in town, you know, the 1918, when, when John Frank started surveying it out, you'll see that our town's not surveyed out like a standard structured city. Um, John Franks was very much an environmentalist and wanted to save a lot of the low-lying areas, a lot of the larger trees. So you still see large trees along what is currently Main Street and even some of the residential streets still have large trees right next to the road or, or just off of the corner of a house where, where he specifically surveyed those points out. Um, but yes, before we started marketing for, for commercial activity in a, a vibrant downtown, albeit the size of an electronics, you know, store in, in Walmart, um, we're super small, but we wanted to make sure that we did have a linear walking path. So while we don't have the Swamp Rabbit Town, Swamp Rabbit Trail connecting two towns together, we do have two miles of sidewalks that are relatively flat, 100% ADA accessible all along our Main Street, um, which is why we focus on Main Street activities. We want to be a walkable community, but we also want you to be able to park at one of the local churches that we partner with and walk throughout town, enjoy our historic walking tour and know that it's accessible for everyone. And I know you just mentioned another one of your uh, passions is trails. Talk about updates on the ideas for trail. Yeah, so we've, we've had a lot of movement over the past six months um, at the county level from the mayors talking together um, in partnership with 10 at the top uh, and connecting our future. Um, so the mayors got together with a group called Upstate Mobility Alliance, uh, which is a product of connecting our future intent at the top, where we're only talking about active and livable communities. Um, and so um, Mayor Burgess and myself have started to discuss how do we get Depot Road and the Transportation Improvement Program through DOT, so that when it is reconstructed that we can have that sidewalk or shared use path that connects the two um, together. I know that um, my fellow mayors, Mayor Dorn, Mayor Roberts, they're working together on a long linear path along a Duke Energy right of way that would connect the cities of Belton and Anderson together. We're super excited for them. We just want to go ahead and start planning for our next connection to them. Um, so we have hired through our um, ARPA funds, we hired Cole Genest and Stone um, out of Charlotte. And so they'll be kicking off next month doing a, a master plan for West Pelzer. So they're going to look at our comprehensive plan, but they're also going to look at, um, you know, where could our first two-story building be in downtown? Is there a reason for us to build a second story on this building to have downtown living or another retail shop? Uh, and they're also going to look at trails. Um, so we still have a long-term lease on 10 acres of property along the Saluda River, and one of our goals is to connect downtown West Pelzer to, to the river and let that be our gateway. And you have a grand vision to one day have the trails connect a lot further out, right? We do, we do. Um, so I'm blessed, you know, professionally to get to work on trails ac across the country. Um, so yeah, sometimes late at night when I, I pour myself a cold beverage of choice, I still bring up Google Earth and start to look at all of the existing and proposed trails in the areas and, and how could we connect those together. So yes, in my Google Earth files, I have this crazy, crazy drawing of how Powdersville, Piedmont, West Pelzer, Pelzer, Williamson, Belton, Honeypath, Anderson, Iva, Pendleton are all connected um, together. It's not too far-fetched. I think it's probably a generational um, project, but if you start to dive into the details, you'll see that Friends of the Green Crescent and Anderson County and Clemson are working together to try to connect those two together, or that Anderson and Belton are already working together, um, or that the Parks and Rec plans for you know District 4 or District 7 includes trails as, as part of their overall recreational plan. Um, so we're all working on it. We've just got to get there. And I don't want to spend too much time on trails, but I know in your consulting, talk about how trails have become a central factor in planning and stuff in communities around the country. Yeah, um, so I did not coin the phrase, but, but trails do transform communities. And we could always go to Traveler's Rest and look at that. Um, but let's go to some smaller cities and talk about how it could transform them. Let's go to downtown Pickens and talk about how Doodle Park and the Doodle Trail really spurred you know a city of, of 5,000 people into having you know the tap rooms or additional places to eat or long-term stays so that you don't have just a day trip you have one night which means additional you know a tax um, being able to work in other communities that may have uh, or may on the surface have really good trail networks they're starting to invest in expanding that network so city of goose creek one of the fastest growing cities in south carolina is spending a portion of their arpa funds on expanding their trail network to connect communities to places um, so goose creek doesn't have a downtown like a downtown charleston or downtown somerville but they want to connect people to where they want to go so 
hospital systems, employment centers, recreational facilities. Uh, th those are the important components that you can't really put a, a price tag on. Um, even small cities like Ridgeway, uh, which is in Fairfield County, a city of 300 people, uh, just passed uh, a regulation having a scenic byway that connects up through Camden all the way up through Lancaster on Highway 34 and 31. It's a great amenity for a vehicular driver, but now they want to figure out how to add a shared use path off of that so someone on a bicycle can experience those same natural resources or perhaps stay in Ridgeway for the night. Um, huge impacts in Pickens and Easley, 10 million a year roundabout number. Um, I, I, that's all recreation in both of those cities. I know that the city of Greenville is up at six or seven million a year and that's not including additional accommodations tax and age tax and all those other things. So it transforms communities and it transforms people. You touched on this earlier when we were talking about the new stuff. What What is new downtown and what are you expecting to come in new here in the next few months? Yep. Um, so we do have uh, Cotton Duck Coffee, uh, which is opening up in the old Moondog location. It's uh, locally owned. Um, they're going to focus on coffee and sandwiches. So kind of think like your Panera Bread, but a local Panera Bread. So they have fresh salads, fresh cut meat, uh, fresh sandwiches. Um, one of the things that we worked on with our AR. ARPA funds when we sat down with council is how do we encourage our existing businesses to grow? Um, so um, we started spending some funding. If you, if you drive down Main Street right now, you'll see that there is zero landscape. All the street trees have been removed. All of those are being replaced. We have new crosswalk signs going in. Um, on Hyman Street, uh, we spent some money on some additional festival street lighting. We bought additional festival tables. And so the first Fridays in July and August, um, we have events. Uh, it's called Summer Jams. Uh, so we have a live band, dessert food trucks, food trucks, all the tables are, are set up, um, and then our local businesses are who are providing the actual entree meal. So all the tables have um, menus from all the local restaurants and they're happy to come out and serve you, whether it's Baby Sumo or Milltown Place or um, Cotton Duck Coffee. Um, all of those are willing to serve you kind of on our festival street. Um, we're blessed that we're about 30% under budget currently um, on our ARPA fund. So we're going to be bringing council back in sometime in August to talk about how can we do a little more, how can we encourage uh, some additional events or some additional economic development. Um, as, as time progresses, you know, some businesses, you know, the, the owners move on or the owners pass away. And so we had an instance where the owners of our Mexican restaurant in town uh, moved on to bigger and better things, which left a, an, an opening. And so blessed that um, Don Jose's will be opening up there um, this summer, which is a, a locally owned um, Mexican restaurant. Uh, so they're going through a complete renovation of that building currently. So that's going to be our newest restaurant in town. And you touched on housing. How do you think, uh, you know, the new uh, uh, sewer capacity at Highway 8 and 81 will affect West Pelzer? Because that's going to be a lot of industry coming in out that way. Yep. Uh, so we have a lot of discussions with Anderson County Economic Development, with DOT, about some of the improvements that are, that are being made. Um, we love job creation. Um, my family is a product of Anderson County Economic Development. Um, my beautiful bride works at Arthrex. Uh, so I thank Burris and Terry and all those folks every time because my wife's employed because of their, their hard work. Um, but we do need to have some serious discussions about the number of distribution facilities that are being developed along the 85 corridor. Um, large, large distribution centers um, typically have low number of employees but they have high traffic volumes. Um, and so in 2017, we were at one transfer truck or 18 wheeler um, every 45 seconds along Main Street. Um, and our latest traffic study, that's only down to about 42 seconds, but it's still way too many. Uh, so we need to start talking about how we can utilize um, the Southern Connector or utilize alternate routes to kind of move some of that truck traffic through. Because you are 100% correct in that uh, the sale of, of the sewer system from the town of West Pelzer to Rewa, coupled with the sewer improvements at 85 and 81, um, there's going to be more subdivisions built that are higher density, uh, perhaps multifamily, and there's going to be more industrial development. Yeah. So we need to um, think very wisely, which is why we hired a master planning consultant to, to help us preserve what we have, yet embrace and encourage the growth that we know is, is coming. 
we can't impact the growth potential of the Highway 8 corridor or the, or the 81 corridor. It's not in municipal limits. So what we have to do is make sure that what does happen is a fabric of our community and that those residents or employees that, that choose to work there or choose to live there know that West Pelzer can still be home to them, that this is their comforting community that they can come to, walk through, eat at, um, and, and still know that, that we're all closely knit. Do you think that what we're, things we're talking about here will increase the demand for housing? You were talking about new housing coming in. Yep, absolutely. So there's not a home on the market in West Pelzer right now. Um, new construction is, is typically sold before it is finished. Um, I, I want to say the last I heard it was about 40 hours is how long a home was on the market from opening until a contract actually being signed. That's with multiple offers. Um, so yes, it's going to impact the market. Um, one of the things that we're fortunate enough to, to have um, in Rewa is a partner that's willing to talk about expanding the sewer system if, if it's needed to adjacent um, large tracts of property. Um, we've got some agreements in place with once the sewer expands, the annexation um, has to be requested. Um, and that's so that we could uh, kind of have our fingers in that to make sure that it does meet the fabric or the architecture of our, our community. We do not want three or 400 home subdivisions, but we know that those need to exist. So how can those, if they were to come here, how can they fit within the fabric? How can we make sure that they have sidewalks or trails or open space that can benefit all, all of our community? Um, I think Williamston and Pelzer are poised identical for, for substantial growth as well. I think we, we may have just got to the table first knowing that we're the direct connection to Highway 8. And so I like to tell people that the 100,000 vehicles a day that are going down 85 of the 24,000 that get off the interstate, um, they come through West Pelzer to get to Williamston or Pelzer. So we're, we're the first face they see, um, which is why the three mayors work so close together to make sure that the West Pelzer face is so strong and that we can tell people, hey, we don't have a 20 acre park in the center of town, but you know who does? Our neighbors in Williamston, they got something really good going on. You should go visit those those folks as well. Um, so we all work together to make sure that we all got the best run and that when residential development comes, we're primed and ready. You touched on this a minute ago. Uh, let's talk about just summer, because I know you have a lot of things going on in the fall, and we'll catch up on that a little closer. But things between now and September, what kind of events you got going on? Yep, so summer jams. Uh, so summer jams in July will feature um, a DJ, um, and then we have uh, the pound cake truck. Uh, so it's the dessert truck with pound cake and all the, all the toppings. Uh, that starts at 5.30 on Hyman Street. And then at 8.30, uh, we have a 40-foot inflatable screen, uh, which we're showing a movie out there. I think the movie in July is Indiana Jones. You have to check out our Facebook to see the exact schedule. Uh, then the first weekend in August, we have a similar schedule. 5.30, there's a live band uh, that night. Um, and then at 8.30, there'll be a movie in the park. Also at the end of August, which is the fourth Saturday, um, in August, we have our dog days of summer is coming back. Uh, so we'll have a dog show. Uh, it starts at 11 a.m. We'll have free giveaways, dog beds, dog food, all the fun stuff. So bring your canine friends down uh, to, to West Pelzer. So we have these events, obviously, because we want the community to be engaged. But we, I keep going back to, to history repeating itself with our vibrancy that we had in 1913. So I can only imagine, you know, Christmas morning after Frankville was formed that people were walking their dogs down Main Street. Uh, so that's why we have the dog days. We want to kind of nod our hat to the history. Hey, bring your dog out. Um, we don't care if you're from West Pelzer. You can be from anywhere in the upstate. Uh, come hang out with us. Very informal dog show. Your dog doesn't need to be, you know, perfect. Um, we just like to, like to have fun, get people off of their front porch, smiling, drinking sweet tea, talking to each other, kind of reminiscing about how West Pilsner used to be and how great it is today. And we'll talk more about this in September, but just give people a 20 second preview because they are a fall event community here. We are a fall event community. That's because we love Clemson football and we love all the 25,000 cars that come through here on game day. So um, yes, we have Pumpkin Palooza planned with a live band this year, more inflatables, outdoor movies. Uh, we have a mile long yard sale October the 1st. We have Westies Vintage Market. We have Farm Days that's going on and the first Christmas parade um, in Anderson County happens right here as a partnership between the town of Pelzer and West Pelzer. We're a fall community and uh, we can't wait for you to stop and spend a little time with us.